Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we can go about interpreting our NMAP results. Regardless of the vendor that you choose for your cybersecurity certification track, when you're taking that first cybersecurity exam of that track, you will probably be faced with having to interpret the output from an NMAP scan on your exam. In this short video presentation, let's take a look at how we can look at those results and quickly determine what our next action is going to be. From my Kali desktop, I'm going to right click on my work folder and from the context menu, I'm going to select open terminal here. One of the best all around switches that you're going to find with Nmap is the dash small letter S capital V switch. This allows us to detect the service and the service version that is running on the target. Very useful. And in conjunction with the dash S small letter V switch, we can also run the dash small letter S capital C switch, which is going to allow us to use the Nmap scripting engine and run the most common default scripts against that target. Now, depending on which vendor you're going to use to take your cybersecurity exam, you may see the results for the dash small letter S capital C Nmap scripting engine scan results and if you do see it they're going to ask you how are you going to interpret this and what's your next move so let's go ahead and run this script against my target here so at my prompt i've typed in nmap i've given it a space a dash small letter s capital v i am looking for the different services that are running on my target but i also want to know what version they're running I've given it another space, a dash, a small letter S, and a capital C, and I'm wanting it to use the Nmap scripting engine and run the most common default scripts against this target. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And now I have the results of my Nmap scan, but how do I interpret these results? And what's going to be my next move? We see that I have a number of services running on a number of ports. And I also have the versioning for those services that are running. But how do I proceed? I always like to use the rule of always going for the low hanging fruit first. And if we look at the top, you'll see that we do have an FTP server running on that target. And that machine is using anonymous FTP login. So what's going to be my next move? I say go for the low hanging fruit. And let's go ahead and clear my screen here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try to FTP into that server and see if it will allow me anonymous logon. So I'll type in FTP. Now I hit enter. And now I am connected to that particular FTP server. And it wants the name of the logon. So I'm going to type in anonymous. And it says that anonymous access is allowed. Send identity. Just type in an email address. So I can type in anonymous at gmail.com let's see what happened and i'm logged in so from the output that we gained from that scan we quickly determined that port 21 was running ftp and allowing anonymous access and that was the low-hanging fruit now that wasn't the only vulnerability but it was the most prevalent one that we saw in the scan results in our next example, you've been given the output from an Nmap scan, and you've been asked to construct the command that was used to generate the output. So we're looking at a couple of things here. We're looking at some services, and we're also looking at an OS detection that was performed. So we know that we're going to have to detect the services and try to figure out what version of the service is running on that target, and we're also going to have to be able to come up with the OS that is running on the target. Just a couple of Nmap switches is all we need. And the second thing that they're probably going to ask you is what is going to be your attack vector for this particular scan? What are your opportunities and what vulnerabilities do you hope will be available to you from this output? Well again I've used that dash small letter s capital V command to determine what services are running and what version of the service is running on the target. The second thing I did was use the capital O to detect what operating system is running on the target. So you've got two different things going on here. You've got detection of a service and the version of the service 
and you want to know what operating system is running on the target. And lastly, what is our attack vector going to be as a result of examining this output? Well, what I see here is the possibility of weak SMB permission. So you're going to want to look at this one as probably being your best attack vector for this particular target. And remember, anytime you're looking at the results of an NMAP scan, and it's showing you the services, the port, and the version of that service that is running on that target, it's probably going to be the dash small letter S capital V switch that was used to generate it. In conjunction with that, anytime they're asking you about detecting the operating system that is running on the host, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, and each one of those ways has a different output, but they will probably give you what you want in the selection that you have for generating that command. They're not going to try to trip you up by giving you a dash capital O and a dash capital A or some other type of switch that can also detect an operating system. They're going to give you the one that you need. So make sure that you look at the results and you see that the OS and service detection was performed in a certain way. In our last example here, we're going to look at the Nmap output that we have in front of us, and we're going to determine what other devices might be able to generate a similar output. So we look at this as being an HTTP server, so it's probably going to be a public-facing device. And the other thing that we have to look at is that it is on a network. So we have a couple of things going here. We have identified that it is a web server that it's probably going to be facing the public and that it is attached to a network. And those are the kind of things you're probably going to be asked on the exam regardless of the vendor. You're going to have to determine what type of device can generate such an output. As you prepare to take that certification exam regardless of the vendor, do try to complete as many capture the flag exercises as you can. These are going to show you the correct methodology and they're also going to show you how to analyze the output from your different scans, whether it be Nmap or it be WordPress or whatever it is. You're going to have to be able to determine the best attack vector by looking at the scan results and determining what is the low hanging fruit and how am I going to be able to exploit it as quickly and as easily as possible. Regardless of the cybersecurity exam, regardless of the vendor that's going to provide you that cybersecurity exam, there's going to be three types of questions. About 30% of the questions are going to be easy. You're going to know those right off the top of your head. You're going to have another 30% of questions on that exam that are not going to be so easy, but they are doable. And lastly, you're going to have 30% of questions on that exam that are probably going to be beta questions as they prepare for the next version of the exam, but you're also going to have questions on there that are not going to be entry level. They're going to be hard. I'm Professor K. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.